Welcome to Take Me to the River's YouTube channel. Come often, subscribe, tell your friends and family. I'm Martin Shore, producer, director of Take Me to the River. We have some very special guests in the house. Trombone Shorty Foundation has been doing great work and we have some students and instructors, very notable instructors, very notable students with us tonight. We are honored to have them. Welcome. I'm going to go around the room. We have some special guests and we'll let you all introduce yourselves, please. Hi, my name is John Rhodes. I am 15 years old. I'm a part of the Trombone Shorty Foundation and I am on a percussion session. What's up, everybody? I'm Julian Gosson, one of the instructors at the Trombone Shorty Foundation. Hello, Glenn Hall. I'm one of the instructors as well. I'm Jamal Washington. I attend the Trombone Shorty Foundation, and I'm in a percussion section. Awesome. Well, these two gentlemen were very humble. Soul Rebels in the house, Rebirth in the house. Let's start out by saying, uh, when did Trombone Shorty Foundation start? And tell a little bit about like uh, the beginnings of the foundation and how it's grown. Uh, what? Well, to my knowledge, I think it probably started about maybe seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the original class or location was at Tulane University. Mm -hmm. And it was there for a couple of years. Then we transitioned over to the uh, Jazz and Heritage Building where we are currently. But it's been, it's been a fun ride. We have a lot of kids that came through. Um, they have a lot of opportunities to play professionally, travel. So it's been some, it's, it's been some good times. For sure. Well, it's, uh, it's great hearing you all today. And what types of things have you and you learned in the foundation? And how has it kind of structured your, your musical journey? Well, like, we have different instructors come in and tell us, like, how to play different things and learn new styles of how to play it. And that just affects your musician, musicianship in general. You come from a musical family, so um, are you getting a lot from home as well as when you go to the foundation and, yeah. and get instruction? My dad, a drummer, he like showed me a lot of new stuff, and I come here and I show them. <laughs> Two-way street. It's the way mentoring works, the way teaching works best. What's interesting to me is there is so much culture and so much musical history has that been a part of what you've been teaching, you know, the students about the history of where the music has come from and how important it is to keep the, uh, you know, the generations knowing where that music came from? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that was a huge reason why Troy actually started the foundation too. So that definitely is um, the backbone of the entire foundation. So yeah, we definitely try to keep that in mind all the time. It seems like, um, you know, New Orleans has changed post Katrina with um, a lot of the neighborhoods disrupted. There was always a lot of community um, teaching, you know, on, uh, in the neighborhoods, uh, literally on the, on the streets. And now I think a lot of the uh, responsibility of, of passing this down and really teaching younger um, our younger students is through foundations and through music programs. So tell me a little bit about like, what's the, what's the daily, you know, sort of the daily uh, curriculum or what's a, what's a day look like in the, uh, in the Trombone Shorty Foundation? So the kids come in and they take a hour business class. Cause we, we stress how important it is to know the business of the music. Because a lot of us back then, we didn't really get that knowledge. So we definitely stress how important it is to learn the business. Then they come over to the musical aspect of the uh, foundation for another hour, and we teach them, you know, the tradition of brass band, how it started, the difference between brass band music and marching band music, because a lot of them are currently in marching bands. Mm -hmm. So it's a big difference in how we, you know, learn and how we teach them. So we just try to keep it as naturally in New Orleans as possible and try to stay the, the course that that we learn, you know, because they can't, they can't really go a lot of places in the street like you mentioned. You know, we used to go to uh, Jackson Square. Mm -hmm. We used to sit with the elders. That's how we learned the music. Mm -hmm. That opportunity 
is not that present at the moment. So, you know, this foundation is something that we didn't have. Now, we just get to show them hands on how the brass band music is learned, how it's taught, and just how, how it's, in the, it's in the blood, it's in, our, in the water we drink. So um, it's very important that they get the real knowledge and teachings of the way to learn it. It's a proper way to learn it. So that's pretty much a day in the Trombone Shorty Foundation. No, it's fantastic. The business piece, it's something that we teach all the time, where, wherever we go, is you have to understand the contracts you're signing. You have to understand there is a business behind this. And without that, um, it's, hard to make, it's hard to make a living anyway in music. And if you're that passionate, you need to make sure that you're understanding the business piece of it. And so that, that, that's really great. The one thing that um, is, uh, is interesting is the progression of brass bands and integrating modern music and what, like what you're listening to, what you're listening to. So talk a little bit about Soul Rebels have been great. You've, you're like what I call third generation in terms of brass band development and, and infusing. You, you, you know, you all um, were probably the first to utilize hip hop rappers, you know, in your music. Something we did with Take Me to the River was really kind of infusing different genres. Rebirth, you, you know, you all were second gen, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, it was Dirty Dozen and Rebirth and starting to um, take popular music and infuse it into that brass band thing. So tell me a little bit about how that's working with your students and, you know, trying to encourage the, not only learning the foundation, but taking their music and putting it into that construct. Well, uh... I think it's important, you know, because at the same time, we have to realize that they are kids and we don't want to lose their attention. Mm -hmm. So it's important to sometimes incorporate their music with the brass band style because it's, I mean, it's music, you know, it's, it's a universal language mm -hmm. and we want them to have musical freedom because we have musical freedom. We don't want to put the kids in a box while stressing the tradition. You know, once we get the tradition down, then it's like, you know, we let them loose. We can, we can pretty much play whatever we want. We just have to get the foundation down yeah. and stress how important it is because without that foundation, it wouldn't be the music that they're listening to right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, but we always are open to whatever style of music, whatever they want to play, as long as they learn it. Right, <laughs> right. As Donald Harrison once said, if you don't learn it, then you can't choose to use it. But if you learn it, you can choose to use it or not use it. Exactly. But you have to learn it. We have a great organization. The Trombone Shorty Foundation is in the house tonight. And we are lucky enough to steal a little bit of Ashley's time, who is director uh, of programming and... Operations. Operations. <laughs> ah, Ashley, welcome. And th Thank thanks you. for making this happen. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Well, tell us a little bit about Trombone Shorty Foundation and what the mission yeah. is and how, um, how everybody out there can help. Of course. Uh, so Trombone Shorty Foundation got started 10 years ago. We're officially celebrating our 10-year anniversary. And yay, which is a big milestone. And so our whole mission is to really preserve traditional New Orleans music education, um, primarily through the brass band pedagogy. And we do that through our Trombone Shorty Academy, which y'all just heard. Um, we get to see our next generation of young musicians and through an apprenticeship program, which is a paid workforce development opportunity for New Orleans area youth. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the apprenticeship Of course. Program? Um, so our apprenticeship program is for New Orleans youth ages 16 to 24, and they get paired in um, industry placements here in New Orleans uh, with the intention to work within the larger music industry. We also support them with training, wraparound supports, uh, and really are trying to hone in on supporting that next generation of talent that might not be the ones that are playing music, but are the ones that really help continue to drive us forward as well. It's fantastic. I mean, that's really such a key is to make sure when we're passing the baton that there are plenty of receivers of that baton so that the music 
goes uninterrupted and the traditions, the culture, the history, the legacy continues. It's one of the things that Take Me to the Rivers uh, Education Initiative does. We, uh, on every single one of our tours, have taken out um, students from the Berkeley City Music Network um, to actually play and learn um, and be mentored by the musicians, but also see what it's like to be on the road and to you know, see what it's like to be a, a professional musician. So it's, it's really great. That runway is, is so important. And we're so glad that, you know, you all are doing such a great job in making sure that that runway is um, ready for 747s. Uh, well, they're outdated now, so 777s, <laughs> right? Um, so thank you, you know, for all of the work that, that you all have done. Um, I'm continually impressed. You know, we work with um, not only organizations here in New Orleans, but in the Berkeley City Music Network across the country and other, you know, music programs. But um, your foundation has done so much in such a short amount of time. I'm, I'm uh, very impressed. So tell us, um, I know you have some things coming up and, you know, yes. how can people help? Well, um, first, well, I don't know when this is airing, but um, first and foremost, uh, Shorty Fest is our annual fundraiser that we do each year, and we're hosting that at Tipitina's. And so if you're here locally, that is always a great way to support. Um, you can also support us online by making a donation, by supporting us, by um, engaging with our young people, whether it's as a mentor or if you have skills to serve as an instructor, we always can use folks within our community to help support our young people. So so if you have a skill that you want to offer to us, like we're always down. Um, and also, of course, every dollar helps go a long way to support the work that we do to keep all of these programs 100% free to our young people. That's, um, that's fantastic.